Well, too little, too late, better late than never. Professor Ransford Jampo is a professor of political science at the University of Ghana, Legon. Professor Jampo, you've seen this statement from uh, the majority leader, Alexander Fenyo Markin. It, it, it sounds clearly one that is, is reconciliatory, at least based on what we have seen in that statement. Is it one that would make a significant difference as things turn out now? Yeah, the point is, if he knows how to sound reconciliatory, he should have sounded this right from the word go before going to Parliament. He should have, he should have gone to caucus with his colleagues to, to let them know. You see, it is today that you are in power. Tomorrow, if you go out of power, it may be insane. And at the end of the day, it is our democracy that will suffer. And so my view is that the matter has not been resolved yet because I can anticipate and foresee um, some um, mem NDC members of parliament also saying that well, in that case, there will also not be part of, of parliament to give the needed quorum for important decisions to be taken uh, for government business to run. And all these things do not augur well for our democracy. And so I am thinking that if there are elderly men and women in the Ghanaian society, let them rise up and let them intervene and let's see how we can uh, 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 address this matter. Otherwise, look, the matter has right. not been resolved at all. Uh, you said the matter has not been resolved at all. Dr. Rashid Draman, Executive Director of the Africa Center for Parliamentary Affairs, is joining us as well on Zoom right now. You agree with Professor Jampo that this matter, even though it's been resolved, appears legally, it is far from over? Um, yes, uh, Alfred, thank you very much for having me. Um, maybe first of all, let me uh, commend the, the majority leader for uh, his statement today, which, I mean, by all means, is a departure from earlier statements that you have played um, for all of us to hear. Um, I think this is what, I mean, we all wanted to hear right from day one. This, as we've all said many, many times, it's a political issue and uh, needed exactly what, what he is saying today. Reconciliation, you know, coming together, <laughs> uniting the country, and so on and so forth. Um, in terms of whether the matter is over or not, um, I just hope that now that the Supreme Court has um, stated clearly what its position is on this matter, I hope um, both sides, would, including the Speaker as well, would abide by the ruling, uh, even if anybody disagrees, because we are a country of rule of law. Um, maybe the NDC side might not be happy, but I think one thing that they would have to remember is that, you know, if you are a minority party, you are a government in waiting, um, and you have to demonstrate that as well in everything that you do. So much as they might not uh, agree with the Supreme Court, we only have just a few um, weeks to go uh, for Ghanaians to decide uh, who is going to lead us and who is going to be majority and minority in parliament. So in that spirit, Alfred, I hope that we will all leave the past behind us and try to come together and do the business of our country. Obviously, it's shared by Alexa Napoleon marking in this statement, but it appears that something more than just this statement would, would have to take place in, as it were, extending the, the overtures to the other side to move on beyond this particular ruling. As you have indicated, it may have just been solved legally, but, but then again, they would need the other side to do business. And from the indication we're getting already, the NDC, some MPs have already started taking a position. Uh, Neil Antevander Poy, the outgoing member of parliament for the Odododio constituency, spoke to us earlier. He had indicated that a number of his colleagues have also resolved not to partake in the business of the House. 
if Parliament is recalled because they're all looking at the elections and matters are rising. I want to take a listen to him and I'll, I'll seek your thoughts on this. This is what Neil Antivanapo said. It's unfortunate that um, the Supreme Court will give a verdict like this when it's so obvious to every Ghanaian that this particular issue did not really need any interpretation because black and white, any classic child can interpret, can just read it and understand. But they decided to have an interpretation. Unfortunately, their interpretation, if you, if you do random sampling of many Ghanaians, they will tell you they are not happy with the Supreme Court's decision. We don't care about the ruling of the Supreme Court. We will respond to a call by the Speaker of Parliament. And we will sit down and evaluate that call, look at the timing, and see whether it is convenient for us to take that decision to leave our consciences and come and sit down in Parliament to do government business. I can say this is the decision of many of us on our platform from the discussions we've had so far since the verdict came out. Majority, close to 99% of us, have decided not to respond to any call. Well, so, Dr. Asitaban, there you have it. What then has to be done beyond this statement? Because it's clear what uh, Neil Antivanapo is saying there. Well, I think, um, you know, uh, tempest might be very high now. I mean, this is an emotional issue, Alfred, and I can understand, uh, you know, the position of the NDC. But I think in this matter, uh, I would hope that they will let Ghanaians be the, the judges in, in this matter. Uh, particularly as we get to uh, December 7. Uh, I believe all these are going to contribute to the way people will decide in terms of when they have the ballot uh, in their hands. Remember, Alfred, um, we had two instances where the stakes were even much higher than this. Uh, when... Um, the current president went to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court ruled against him. He said, I disagree, but I respect the court's uh, ruling. The country moved on. Uh, the former president went to the court. The same thing happened. He disagreed with the court, uh, but, you know, accepted the verdict of the court. Um, I think that is how we should behave as Democrats. And I think that um, even the Right Honorable Speaker, when uh, I believe he recalls Parliament, uh, perhaps we might hear him say his reading is different from the Supreme Court, but he accepts that. So I would appeal to the NDC, let Ghanaians be the judges uh, in this matter. Um, we have just about two weeks. Um, let them come to the house. Uh, let's see if the numbers are there um, so that whatever business that is left, that they can, um, you know, consensually um, work on. Let them work on it. And, uh, and let's um, end the tenure of this eighth parliament in peace. And then on December 7, um, Ghanaians will decide whether the NDC will be majority or the MPP will be majority. Your time. Thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Executive Director of the Africa Center for Parliamentary Affairs. Coming up next, let's take the theme on this matter briefly. Um, as, as we're getting to the implications of this particular decision. That's coming up next here on Ghana tonight. And we'll get into why this is of matter in the implications of this particular decision by the Supreme Court. Um, that's coming up next here on Ghana tonight, and especially when it comes to the issue of government business and matters arising, that is our focus. Uh, quickly, Dennis Pobre, Wadam, why is this really uh, of importance? Well, so like I mentioned earlier, if the cracks are not um, patched properly, what it means is that if Parliament is recalled, whether by way of emergency recall or if they think that the issues have been resolved enough for them to return to the House don't need the numbers from the other side. That's because the question of quorum would always arise for parliament to either um, be adjourned or for them to do business. Now, when it comes to the quorum in parliament, you have one for sitting and then one for decision-making or for voting. 
-hmm. it has to do with Sitton, the provision is Article 102 of the 1992 Constitution, which right. talks about quorum of parliament. Now, it says that a quorum of parliament, apart from the person presiding, shall be one-third of all the members of parliament. This is easy to get, because when mm -hmm. you do the calculation of 275 members of parliament, you are looking at 92 MPs. So with 92 MPs in the House, they can have a quorum to sit. Where the challenge comes is where they have to vote or to take a decision. Now, that, you find that in Article 1041 of the 1992 Constitution. And it mm -hmm. reads that, except as otherwise provided in this Constitution, matters in Parliament shall be determined by the votes of the majority of members present and voting with at least half of all the members of Parliament present. This is where the challenge is. Mm. For there to be a decision, you need at least half of all the members of Parliament present. Half, we are looking at 138. Now we know the composition of parliament as it stands now per the Supreme Court ruling is that you have 137, 137 on each side and an independent candidate who is doing business with the MPP. Right. So the MPP side or group can marshal 138 members of parliament to come and do business and actually vote. Okay. That's if they are able to mobilize all, all the 138, including those who have already made their intentions known that they want to contest either as independent candidates or on the ticket That's of the MPP. Morrison, Kojo Asante. Asante. And, and then, then uh, also Mr. now Siyama. Andres Yama. Yes. yes, he's with them. Indeed. So essentially, if the MPP, I mean, sorry, the NDC decides not to take part in parliamentary business, then for the MPP to succeed in doing business and taking a decision, they need all the members of parliament in the house. And that's if they're going to be able to do that. Because yes. that's also is... been another issue that Martin Pepe has been talking about. Yes. The inability of uh, the leadership of the MPP to marshal all their members right. to attend to the business of the House. Because look, we have 24, technically, 24 days to this election day, December 7, and their focus is there as well. They're doing some work in their constituencies, but we'll see how things play out.